what's going on guys? Alex here with TFL Bike. We're getting some ramps and some straps loaded into our Cummins right now because we're going to look at a new motorcycle. You guys have been asking for it and we're hearing it. You guys want to see a TW200 on the channel. So we found a few and it's really hard to find a used motorcycle right now of any kind, but especially a TW200. So we found one, it's a 2015. It's pretty stock, it's got a few add-ons that we'll take a look at when we get up there. Um, but yeah, let's hop in the truck, it's about 30 minutes away, and on our way down there I'll kind of explain uh, some of the other bikes we were looking at and why we settled on this one. We've been on the hunt for one of these TW200s for over a year, I think, but the search really started getting serious a couple of weeks ago. It's summer now, we wanna get out on the trails and ride. We have the ranch to use now, so we just wanna get one of these bikes because you guys have been asking for it so much, but they're really hard to find. Just this morning, I found a 2015, basically the same exact bike we're going to look at now. It was listed for 3750, which in this market is actually pretty reasonable. Um, and it sold like that. The guy said he had someone lined up at noon and 4 p.m. to come look at it. I said, I can beat both of those guys there. I'm going into the office right now to get a truck and ramps. And as I was loading the ramps into the truck, he called me and said that it's sold already. I also found a 1990 TW200 in a really cool teal color. And that's more of the bike we really wanted was an older one that was a little more beat up and it hit the ground a few times already. Um, but that one, once again, People were lined up to buy it. We were way down on the list for that one and he was going based on the order of the messages he received. So there was no chance we were gonna get that one for two grand either. Now this one we're going to look at, it's listed for 4,400. That's only $300 less than the MSRP of the bike and it's what, seven years old at this point and has over 3,000 miles on it. So I don't feel amazing about that, but this is the world we live in right now. Bikes are crazy expensive. Back in college, I bought a TW200. It was a 2004, so much older, but it was 1800 bucks and came with a ton of extra parts and a ton of add-ons. And deals like that, you just really can't find at all anymore. And you might be saying, why don't you just go get one new? Um, you can't. We called every single dealership in the area and none of them had TW200s. None of them would really even take a deposit for one. They said they have no idea when more are coming in. And we also reached out to Yamaha because we run a YouTube channel and we work with Yamaha sometimes, um, not to get a deal on the bike, but just to see if they could help secure us one at a dealership. Uh, and they told us that if we want one new, it's not gonna be till next year. So buying one new is out the window. All right, so here we are. This is the 2015 we're looking at today and just started it up. Everything seems to be pretty good. Uh, Case is gonna be here in a few to spin it around the block real quick and uh, just make sure everything feels good. But I'm liking what I see so far. We've got some nice aftermarket pegs on there with some good grip. We've got uh, hand guards on here, which look pretty decent. They're not fully, you know, like aluminum or steel backed, but still pretty good. The main thing I like about the spike, the reason I chose this over some of the other ones we were looking at is the tires. Um, this does have an aftermarket rear on it, but more importantly, the front tire. The front tire that comes on these bikes, they look terrible. They are terrible um, and yeah I've just have never heard any good things about the stock front tire on this bike so good to see an oversized front tire on here and it really just kind of completes the look of the bike makes everything look the way it should from the factory couple more things there's a little exhaust guard down here and a luggage rack as well the owner also told me that the carburetor has been uh, gone through and adjusted recently so that should all be good Looking at the odometer, we have just under 3,500 miles, so pretty much what you'd expect for, you know, a 2015 TW200. This isn't a bike you're gonna put a ton of highway miles on, but yeah, everything looks good. Pretty beefy aluminum skid plate down there. Um, and besides that, you know, it's your classic TW200. It's got some love marks on it already, which is kind of what we wanted, so we wouldn't be afraid to kind of beat up on it at the ranch. But yeah, everything's looking good to me. I'm gonna have Case test ride it because I just had surgery on my foot yesterday, so I don't really wanna hop on a bike. So he'll be here any second and he'll tell us how it rides. Have you ever wondered what is the coolest motorcycle ever made? Well, I have the definitive answer. It's this 1970 Honda CT70 that our good buddy Andy Smith 
fully rebuilt for us, rebuilt engine, all kinds of new old stock parts on this bike. And we did an entire video series showing the rebuild and showing these bikes in action and what they're capable of. And very soon, this bike is going to be auctioned to benefit Biker Down, a charity that helps bikers and their families after an incident. So it's going to support a really great cause and this is all thanks to our friends at Rider Justice. If you're interested in getting your hands on absolutely the coolest bike ever made, be sure to stay tuned because this is gonna be coming on TFL Bids very shortly. What? What are you looking at? I want your opinion on this motorcycle. Oh yeah, I can do that. Hey, how's it going? Good man, how are you? Doing well. Oh Toby, stop. <laughs> Give me a break, man. Okay. Nice to meet you, Case. Absolutely. Nice to meet you. This is a good looking bike. Yeah. I like these foot pegs. They're, they're fast way, they're like 250 bucks. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they look nice yeah. and grippy. Yeah, yeah well, look, the original ones are like this big. So small. Yeah. Toby is attacking. <laughs> He's attacking. <laughs> so, how long have you had the bike? I've had it for about six, seven months. And I'm going to get a hitch carrier so I can take the KLX with me. Right. And this, it has a little bit more, it's a little bit more highway friendly than this bike. Yeah. I love riding this bike. So, uh, this was kind of like an in intermediate between. Yeah. That's yeah. no, a. It's a good looking bike. I'm sure Alex has kind of already talked through a lot of the, uh, a lot of the Yeah, basics. I just want you to ride it, make sure it rides good. Yeah, that I can do. All right. Come here, T. Let's see how this T-dub is. I love the seat height on this. This is, <laughs> this is nice. It's hilarious what it is. Looks like we're fuel on. Oh, let's see how it runs. Touch feels fine. Rear brake, nice. Front brake, feels nice. Second gear. Third gear. Fourth gear. Fifth. So, we've got all the gears. Seems to be pretty good. Let's uh, get on the brakes pretty good coming up to this stop sign. Yeah, I mean, that all seems good. I mean, it seems like a, a perfectly happy bike. Bike feels good. I mean, I really, I couldn't think of a single thing about it that doesn't feel good. It's, it's riding exactly the way I wanted it to. Nice, you settled up for 4100, what do you think? I think it's probably worth it. I mean, ideally we would have been able to find a bike for like two grand. That's what you paid for your TW200 you used to have back in the day. That. Yeah, you paid 1800. It would have been nice to get one for around about that price, but the market is just crazy. Anytime one of them is at that price range that we're looking at it gets snatched up immediately and rather than wait any longer than we need to I think we just get the bike that's in front of us it's a good bike the market is strong for them so this is this is the one cool. I mean I'm beyond stoked to take this thing out into some Colorado trails see what it can do um, it's just such a approachable easy to ride bike with a low seat height it's light and it's not super powerful but it really doesn't need to be so this is gonna be a blast 4100 bucks right here Pascal that's yours thanks guys enjoy the bike we will and check it out on TFL bike we're gonna make a lot of fun videos with it Definitely. so we're gonna get it loaded up so yeah getting the, the new t-dub all strapped down now I like that we can call it RT dub now that's pretty cool so yeah it took us a while to find and we probably overpaid a little bit like you said 4100 bucks I ran some values on this. Um, KBB doesn't have a price listed for a 2015, but for a 2017, they say it's right around 3,900 bucks, right around that. Um, and then NADA for a 2015, like this bike, says that average retail is right around 2,900 bucks. So 
Definitely didn't get a screaming deal on this, um, but in the current market, we didn't pay over MSRP, and the bike's in good condition, uh, and it's got good parts on it. Compared to the other ones we saw, which were pretty much all bone stock, this one's got good tires, a good luggage rack, good pegs, nice beefy skid plate, so, you know, I don't normally like saying that, you know, it's got more parts, so we're gonna overpay for it. Normally I would say, Parts aren't really worth anything besides to the person that put them on, um, but I guess that's my way of justifying this bike is saying it's got some aftermarket parts, so who cares that we paid a little more for it. But yeah, we're happy with the bike and uh, I think it should make for some good videos, so even though we overpaid a little, we'll get some good videos out of it, have fun with the bike all summer, and then hopefully the market doesn't take a complete crash and we can still get our money back out of it when we're done with it. So there we go, a little road trip, and we made it back to the office. I'm gonna slide this bike back over to the center of the truck. We did that so we could get the tailgate shut. Um, but yeah, pretty happy with it. Got it unstrapped here and down on the side stand and loaded out of the bike. Funny enough, when I was on my way back with this bike, I got a notification from uh, my Facebook app that said that that 1990 Teal TW that Case and I were all excited about and bummed that we couldn't get, the seller raised the price from $2,000 to $3,000, and he just listed it last night. So I have a feeling he was getting way too many messages about it and realized that he undervalued his bike, which is crazy because a 1990 TW200 should not be worth three grand, but it is in the current market. So I was feeling pretty bad about overpaying for this. I'm feeling less bad now that I know that that really old one is going for three grand, and we got this for just over four, much newer, less miles, good parts on it. So yeah, feeling less bad than I was before. And yeah, just like that, this TW200 has a brand new home here at TFL Studios. Really happy about that because our lineup here was looking a little slim over the past few days. We only had three bikes in here and the past couple weeks we've had way more than that. So I'm excited we have a new bike to play around with, a new used bike that's already got some scratches on it that we won't feel too bad about if it does touch the ground. Um, yeah, so just let us know down in the comments what you'd like to see with this bike. We have a lot planned. We're gonna compare it to David's KLR. I think we're gonna um, definitely take it through the courses at the ranch. We'll probably give it to Andy, let him have some seat time on it up at his track. Um, maybe take it to Moab and maybe kit it out to be somewhat of an adventure bike. It's already kind of halfway there with the tires, the skid plate, the hand guards, the luggage rack, but there's definitely a few more things we could do to it. And also I want to hear your thoughts on the current state of the motorcycle market down in the comments. We overpaid for this bike, but I think if you want a motorcycle in 2022, especially in the middle of the summer, and especially a dirt bike when you're this close to the mountains, you're gonna overpay. So it is what it is. Um, like I said, there were a lot of other bikes that were way more expensive over MSRP. This was at least under MSRP. And yeah, I mean, any bike that pops up with a good price is gone in less than half a day. So. If you wanna get a screaming deal on a motorcycle, you basically need to be unemployed, not have a family, and not have any free time or any fun things to do in your free time and make this your full-time job. So we overpaid a little, but I think it's a solid bike. You'll see lots more of it to come. And don't forget to go to alltfl.com so when we do start making adventure videos with this, you don't miss any of that. See you in the next one.